I did a video a while back uh, about Victoria Newland on my other Gonzalo Lara channel, right? It got uh, over 150, maybe even 200,000 views at this point. I don't know. I haven't paid attention, but that's not important. The important thing is that I did this whole live stream about her. And I talked about her, her family background, how she um, is the daughter and granddaughter of people who were very much affected by events that happened in Russia in 1905. And that is the source, the spark of her hatred for Russia. And that is why Victoria Newland is pushing for regime change in the United States. And Victoria Newland, as I've stated, is a very important figure in the American foreign policy establishment. Though her title seems rather mundane, under Secretary of State for Political Affairs, her position is actually key. It's her portfolio to bring about regime change in Russia. But when you start looking at Victoria Newland, you start to discover other things about her that are really interesting, specifically who she's married to. You start to realize that she's married to a whole group of people who are basically Basically, war and lies run in her family. She's married to a man named Robert Kagan. Now, Robert Kagan right now is a fellow at the Brookings Institute. The Brookings Institute is a very important think tank in the United States, perhaps one of the most important. It's where essentially American foreign policy is created. One could argue that Robert Kagan is at the very center of where U.S. foreign policy is created, that he himself might be the architect of much of it. You can say that. He's a very, very influential person. And the groups that he was involved with previously give him a network of contacts throughout the State Department, throughout the mass media. He was partners with Bill Kristol and a whole bunch of other people. I mean, really, just look up his Wikipedia the names, the roster of names, it's like a who's who of the foreign policy establishment and also of the media establishment, of the so-called serious media establishment. Robert Kagan is key because Robert Kagan is basically the man who, through this enormous network of social contacts, of people he has worked with before, he is the one setting the pace insofar as American foreign policy. He's the one who's pushing for Russian regime change, which is crazy because the Russians are going to fight tooth and nail. They want their regimes. They like it. They like it plenty fine. Okay. And the notion that the Americans are going to regime change Russia is absurd. It's as absurd as, say, China regime changing the United States. Do you really think that, the, that China has the power to overthrow the Constitution and put in, I don't know, Alex Jones as uh, the president? Do you think that the Chinese have that power? I mean, what would you think if the Chinese wanted to do that? Because that's basically what Robert Kagan and his wife, Victoria Newland are trying to do in Russia. I mean, think about it. They want to have a Viktor Navalny, who is a blogger, a blogger, okay? He's like the Drudge Report, like Matt Drudge. Imagine if the Chinese were trying to get Matt Drudge to become the new president of the United States by overthrowing and eliminating the U.S. Constitution. What would people in the United States say to this Chinese plan, this Chinese master plan? We'd say, these people are nuts. They are completely off their rocker. What? That's the kind of plan that Robert Kagan and his wife, Victoria Newland, that's the kind of plan that they're pushing, but they're not alone. Because Robert Kagan has a brother called Fred Kagan. And Fred Kagan, where, where is he at? Let me just, uh, you know, pull him up real quick. Fred Kagan, you know, he's a professor at West Point, okay? And he is a scholar at the American Enterprise Institute, another, you know, conservative think tank. And a lot of conservatives go to the American Enterprise Institute and they get funding, they get money, they get all kinds of nifty stuff. They get the possibility of publishing in prestigious news port, uh, uh, organizations that help them in their career. Fred Kagan, in a weird way, is kind of like an intellectual kingmaker insofar as American conservatism is concerned. And Fred Kagan is the brother of Robert Kagan. And it gets even better. You know who Fred Kagan is married to? He's married to Kimberly Kagan. And who is Kimberly Kagan? Well, she is the director of the Institute for the Study of War. 
And if you've heard of it, you know, a lot of my uh, friends and acquaintances and my mutuals on Twitter know all about ISW, the Institute for the Study of War, and they're outraged by it because the Institute for the Study of War puts out these tweets, these, uh, these posts, these articles that are completely wrong about the Ukraine situation. They are completely propagandistic. And, and completely off the wall, and yet all the other mainstream articles, uh, uh, news organizations rather, pick up on what the Institute for the Study of War says and repeat it. And all of these other Twitter luminaries repeat the ISW's bullshit, because it is bullshit. It's propagandistic. It's lies. Lies about Putin's motivation, lies about the combat effectiveness of the Russians, lies about how effective the Ukraine army actually is. Do you know why the ISW pushes lies about uh, Russian unpreparedness insofar as the war is concerned? Because they're trying to give the illusion to the American leadership class that the Russian military, the Russian armed force, is not particularly capable, that the American armed force could take them. And so part of that plan, and it's a plan, is to denigrate the Russian armed force and say that they're low on morale, that their equipment is crap, that they don't have logistics. I mean, like really, how hard is it, or how easy rather, is it to tell if their logistics situation, the Russian logistics situation is good or bad? Huh? Uh, you, me, we're not in the military, we don't know. And some outfit saying, oh, we're the Institute of the Study of War. We study war all the time and we know all these things. And we can tell you that the Russian um, logistics effort is crap. Well, you know, we hear that was in Probably right. I guess so. You know, I guess the Russians' logistic is garbage. I guess the Russian uh, morale is incredibly low. I guess the Russians are carrying out all these things of like killing babies and, you know, eating pregnant women and all kinds of crap. I mean, I guess so. I mean, the ISW says it and they seem to know what they're talking about. And so you believe their bullshit. You believe their bullshit and it gives you this subconscious notion that the Russian armed forces is not something to take seriously. And we can take it. Ah, oh, come on, you know, you and me, we're American, man. America number one! America number one! We ain't never lost no war since, uh, well, we ain't never won a war since the Second World War, and the United States didn't even win the Second World War. It was really the Russians who took Berlin now, isn't it? Hmm? Well, anyway, that's for another video, but in this video, the ISW is convincing you by way of its influence on social media that the Russian army is a pushover and that the American army could take it and beat it, which is an absolute fiction, okay? It's completely off the wall. But you see what's going on with these four people. Kimberly Kagan, Fred Kagan, Robert Kagan, and Victoria Newland. They're pushing for war with Russia relentlessly. And they are convincing Americans that it's a war that they can win when it's not. You have to keep in mind that the Ukrainian armed force was trained to NATO standards in terms of command and communication, in terms of logistics, in terms of tactics, operational, everything. They were trained to the NATO standard. They were the largest army, except for Russia's, in all of the continent of Europe, including America's. So you can say that they were the best trained, largest NATO army in Europe, and on top of that, they actually had combat experience with the eight years of relentless, low-level skirmishes going on between Ukraine and the Donbass region. So they were the best trained, best equipped, largest, with actual combat experience, and they are getting the ever-living shit kicked out of them by the Russians. The Russians are annihilating them. It's a, it's a fucking tragedy. The Zelensky regime should sue for peace, should have sued for peace a month ago, because every day that passes, 500 Ukrainian men at least are dying for nothing, because they can't win. And yet these four people, this family hell-bent on war and lies, they keep gaslighting the Americans and keep pushing for war. Know who the real enemies are. It's not the Russians. It's not the Ukrainians. It's the Kagan family and the people allied to them. They're the real enemy. They're the ones pushing for a war between the United States and Russia that the United States 
cannot win and has no strategic interest in getting involved in. But the Kagan family, for reasons that, well, you'd best ask them, they are relentlessly pushing it, and they have the levers and the contacts, the levers of power and the contacts among the mainstream media and the political class to push for this successfully. You, in America and Europe, you, your family, your city might go up in a nuclear fire because of Kimberly Kagan, Fred Kagan, Robert Kagan, and Victoria Newland understand what's going on.